What's up, YouTube? Mike here with another episode of Talk to the Mic, and I'm here with Jacob. Thanks for being on the Hello. show, bro. Mike, what's going on, man? Good to be here. So, for the people who don't know you, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, uh, well, my name's Jacob, and um, I'm sitting here in my house in uh, rural Nova Scotia. It's a beautiful, sunny October day, which is, uh, they're, they're, the weather can be all over the place in, uh, in October out here. So it's, uh, I'm happy it's a beautiful day. But here, let's just, um, I'll let things uh, get exposed as we chat. Perfect. So you are an actor and you also do illustrations and art. Do you want to tell me a bit about your illustrations and your artwork? Um, yeah, I, like for my main uh, sort of day to day uh, like job, I'm a I just I'm self employed, but I do like illustrations and do screen prints of my drawings, and uh, I like to get high and draw. Basically, is my approach. So I you know might have a little hoot and then get out my you know pen and sketchbook and do some doodling and see what uh, you know see what develops. And then often, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll choose some drawings, you know, and certainly not every drawing, but to, to develop into a image that I will then uh, screen print onto paper. Um, so you can just see, there's a little something on the wall right there. Let's tilt up a little bit. Or here, I'll, I'll just take it off the wall. <laughs> yeah, so this is an example of a screen print. Okay. And screen print is sort of like a fancy stencil where you, um, like the colors are applied one at a time to the piece of paper through a big screen, like these these screens that I have. And so I, I mix the colors and put them onto the paper one at a time. So this is a, well, this is actually a two color print. The purple and blue are applied at the same time on what's called a uh, split fountain layer, where you have two different colors in the same layer. And then there's black on top. But yeah, that's, uh, as you might notice, that's Bubbles and his cat army right there. Nice, nice. Yeah, I've noticed, a lot, I've noticed a, from your Instagram, a lot of the work you do, a lot of it's got that psychedelic feeling to it. And then you got the odd stuff with like, you got you got Bubbles. I think you got one with you with uh, the late Phil Collins and like the, you know, the cheeseburger walrus, the bam and peanut butter yeah, yeah. and jam, that and yeah, yeah. work. Now, the albums, like the, the album covers you've done for artists, have they been kind of the same concept as a psychedelic concept or was it something they wanted? Yeah, I certainly I, I do love the psychedelic like rock poster, um, you know, style of art. And that's certainly an influence, um, you know, into my uh, in, into, into my work. When I, I uh, sort of cut my chops doing screen printing when I was living in St. John's, Newfoundland, um, and I was doing posters for a band called the Idlers out there. They're, they were a ska and reggae band. Um, and so. That, that's where I was pulling my first screen prints. And so I kind of like, they would, you know, tell me that they need a poster for a, you know, for a certain night at a certain place. And I would have free reign pretty much to like play around with the poster. And so I would sort of, you know, learn different techniques that way and um, sort of cut, you know, cut my chops doing posters for them. And so definitely my, you know, my style and my, um, you know, skill level has increased since then. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's always been, Ever since I started screen printing, one of the big inspirations has been this sort of psychedelic, you know, rock poster style. Um, lots of those posters were also screen printed. And so, you know, that is, um, that does, that is, is a part of the look. Awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I've seen some of them. I think they're like amazing. Just like the way, just the way the picture is set, you can see the vibe, you can see the color flow and everything else. They're like, they're really nicely made. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I sort of like drawing, like, you know, sort of funny, slightly twisted creatures in some kind of trippy environment. So that that's what, like maybe most of my, you know, not all of my pieces, you know, might sort of break down to that kind of, um, to those elements. Nice. Uh, nice. You've also, you've also like, you, you like, well, obviously people know you're an actor, but uh, you've done a couple of zombie movies. I'm not sure if you're, are you a fan of like the zombie genre? Cause I know you've been in Survival of the Dead, you've been in Land of the Dead. Yeah remake of dawn of the dead so you want to tell us a bit about that yeah it was um i you know i was a minor fan of zombie movies from like when i was a teenager we used to watch them like you know get together as you know in, in high school and whatever and watch uh you know watch old romero and similar movies i used to be sort of scared of like scary movies and like if something was too gory even now if it's too gory like 
ridiculous amounts of blood and guts. It's a bit much for me, but now I do like suspense and sort of like a certain amount of, you know, tension. Although I have my, but uh, yeah, I was living, I had been, how did, when were we? I was here in Nova Scotia for a while, then I'd moved back to Ontario to go to university around the year 2000. And um, after doing some trailer park boys work out here, I was in ACTRA, the acting union. So I was able to get like onto the rosters for doing background work in Toronto. I was going to school outside Toronto in a different city. And uh, yeah, and that was back, I guess, you know, 2000 to 2001 when they were first reshooting uh, Dawn of the Dead, might have been the first one of the time of a sort of a series of zombie flicks that were made in Toronto around uh, that era. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I got called in to be like background, um, background zombie and it was fucking nuts. Like I remember the first day going in, um, I was part of what was called the B unit. So there's already a bunch of zombies that worked on the movie for, you know, for a while. And so I went in with a bunch of other newbies and uh we had to go up to like the suburbs of toronto somewhere like and it was some old like I remember, it was an old zeller store i think that was like empty and just converted to like an empty warehouse space and walking in there there's all these people in like full zombie makeup and like prosthetics so people with like necks like split open and like heads bashed like there's like on side the side and everything else yeah totally yeah weird shit like that protruding bones but they were sitting around like playing cards you know having naps in their chairs like <laughs> acting like normal people and it was like seriously stomach churning at first like walking in there like all these like the makeup's so good it looks like you know open wounds mm -hmm. um anyway so on that movie i ended up just wearing a mask so i was like a deep background zombie wearing this like sort of uncomfortable cut like rubber mask and then in some of the other ones that were shot i ended up getting like makeup and you know being uh getting into the action a little bit more um in front of the cameras but uh it was great man it was like there were two or three zombie movies that were shot you know pretty close together so i got a bunch of days working on them decent cash and uh it was, it was like lots of fun if also exhausting working nights on, oh, yeah. on a show like that like i said i see like i said dawn of the dead i tried to find you it was hard to find you but now i realized because of the mask it's a little different but in yeah. land, of the, in land of the dead you're very like if, if people can't see you they got a problem because you are pretty clear in there when at the end of the scene i think near the end when they shoot out the fireworks they look at you and then they zoom in on you specifically so that gives it like right, yeah, yeah. It's survival of the dead i think you're you're chained up dressed up like a postman i think or something like that oh so, yeah, right. yeah i i'd forgotten about that one yeah that was maybe the third the third one um, yeah, so they see you there too and because because of the way the face is like you can tell just the way your facial structure is you see who you are and I, I thought that was kind of cool because I read somewhere that uh, George A. Romero liked you as a zombie. That's why he headlined you in Land of the Dead as the focus during that fireworks scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got to uh, sort of, you know, meet him just briefly. But yeah, he, he picked me out from all us, uh, you know, freaky zombies. I guess my zombie came out of the, like, sort of the trance that was caused by the fireworks first. I also remember on that trying to get... Uh, they're trying to get an upgrade. I, like when you're a background performer, you're paid a lot less, obviously, than actors. But there was always this thing on, like when you're on, like when you're on set, like, oh man, if the director ever talks to you, that means you get an upgrade. It's like then you got it made because you get like bump from background rates to actor rates or something like that, or at least like a better rate. And I remember, like after that, I was like, oh my god, you know, Romero just gave me direction. I just did it. Like <laughs> I got paid. I'm gonna like start raising cash. And then I tried to like talk to the folks who were working there and like no one would pay attention to me. I talked to my agent and she was also like, oh man, like it's not gonna happen, but sorry. So I was like, oh, that sucks. Um, wow. I don't know where this story's going. It, in the end, I feel I should, probably should have gotten an upgrade. I, sh I should have fought for it a bit more, but uh, all in all, it was super fun to work on the show. That's for sure. I bet you zombie movies are good to be. Like say, like, like as uh, in Land of the Dead, you're, you're headlines, so you see yourself more. Survival of the Dead, you just, I guess you're just, you're chained up, nothing big, but in Land of the Dead, they see your face, like, they zoom up on you, and, like, it's because, I think they use the fireworks to distract the zombies while they go do their raids and whatever, and then you're one of the first to go, hey, look, like, you know what, that, the hell with these fireworks, look at these people, and then you're, like, everybody else follows your lead after that, and they're, like, yeah, let's go, let's go get these people, and then, you know, they're kind of fucked up after that, so... But yeah, like I said it was kind of cool to see you in that. It was kind of, and then there's also a history of violence, which is one of my favorite movies that you're oh, in. Also. 
and you're just like you're not credited they don't really see you much but if you if you like i, I i'm big on paying attention so i saw when he walks into the bar you're the first person you see at the bar and then he's moving to everybody else so you're right smack in the middle of that one how was that working for that movie man i'm, I'm impressed you were able to 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 notice me in that scene <coughs> Excuse me, I just took a hit there. <laughs> it's all good. Cheers, man. <laughs> oh, cheers. Yeah, here. I'll have a sip of, uh, sip of coffee, too. Nothing like a coffee in a pipe. Yeah, it's like a wake and bake. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was, um, that, that's an awesome movie. Like, going into it, um, I didn't know what to expect. Like, there was a rumor that, uh, you know, that uh, Aragorn there was going to be in the movie. Um, and so there was a bit of buzz about that in the uh, in, in the background holding. What's his name there? That actor, the uh, the star of History of Violence. Uh, oh, I can't. Vigo Vigo Mortensen, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vigo, that's right. And so, uh, I mean, he had such a larger than life, you know, presence in um, Lord of the Rings that uh, mm -hmm. it was crazy to see him. He's actually like like quite a small dude um, compared to, I guess, me. I'm a tall dude. Well, yeah, exactly. Like he wasn't like the giant like warrior like you know linebacker type dude that I sort of you know thought he was going to be after uh, just like watching uh, watching other flicks he was in. But yeah, yeah, that was fun. Ratty Street West, no Queen Street East in Toronto. Oh, that was something in Toronto. I wasn't sure. I knew it was filming in Ontario. I just didn't know where it was. So, yeah. and I guess that scene was supposed to be maybe in Philadelphia when he goes to like see some like you know dude from. And this rough, right, rough he, he gets he gets revealed that uh, like he's all he's like the family guy. Then he then they finally find out oh like he's got this pass, and that's when he goes. I think he's heading to Philadelphia to go meet somebody in that bar, and that's that that's the scene that you're in. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just it was almost it was some old kind of like roachy bar on uh, you know, Queen Street East that they uh, booked for you know for the night, I guess, and uh, it was awesome. Um, it was a. Uh, I remember I felt I was sort of out of place amongst that group. Like it was a bunch of these sort of like biker, rough and tumble types. And then it was me. I just got my hair cut. So I was looking sort of like, I thought preppy with a little like brown golf shirt on. <laughs> but I guess I fit in enough uh, to, uh, to um, yeah, be in the scene with all these other like, you know, folks who sort of fit more into the, you know, queen. Well, all, a lot of bars, a lot of bars in that, in that area in Philly, I find like, cause, I, cause I've been to Philly. A lot of the bars in that area have like if you have like a whole bunch of crowd, you've always got that one or two or three person that doesn't blend in who just decides to I'm gonna walk into this dive bar and check it out. So they walk in. Uh, and uh, odd person. It was uh, it, it was it was very well cast in that case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you look at everybody else and like that that that's how I noticed you right away. Because you see everybody else and you're right in the middle, and I'm like watching. And I'm like. Oh shit! There's Jacob right there. Like, and then like, like is he gonna say anything? And then then they zoom away and they do the whole rest of the stuff. And I'm like, okay, then like he's in there, but like, I see it. So I, yeah, I take I, I point I take good attention to all the movies. It's something weird I do because I'm a big movie guy. So yeah, you must. Yeah, folks. I mean, people, other people have asked me about that, but it's it's very rare. Like, yeah, you like you you, you got to be pretty observant to to notice that. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's what I do. So I, I got a, I got another side show with uh, another buddy of mine. And we review movies. So I have to, when I watch the movies, I watch them all to detail. Oh, okay. Cool. So now let's talk about what I guess everybody knows already. Trailer Park Boys. Now you've been on the show. What people people might not know because like they, I'm guessing now what they do is they most people relate to Trailer Park Boys as of Netflix. So season eight and on. So they know you. You've been there from season eight and on. What people sometimes don't realize is that. You've been in the, the, the show the whole time. You were there for the first episode as a cashier, and you've had multiple jobs and everything else. You were there from day one until now. So how did it feel being cast on that show? How did it feel being the first, like, the, you know, your first couple of seasons as just, you know, getting jobs and getting fired by Ricky doing something to being one of the full members of the cast now? How does that feel? How was that? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty trippy, like pretty surreal experience all in all. I mean, I've never, I never thought I would ever, you know, be an actor, um, ever, at least since like maybe grade seven um, or something like that. Uh, I would go into an acting camp in uh, like in the summer, like some somewhere around grade seven. And then we had to like do a play at the end of it. And it was just like, 
I was so mortified and had so much stage fright, you know, having to do that play. I was like, oh my God, like, there's no way I want to be an actor. I like, screw this. I like, you know, being behind the scenes or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was very unusual and unexpected to end up, you know, being asked to uh, play this small part in the first, uh, in the first season. Um, but I guess, you know, the, the facts, that I was sort of awkward and nervous fit the character and, you know, sort of suited what they, what Mike Cloudenberg was looking for. And, uh, the rest is history. I mean, certainly after seeing the first season, like, I guess it was exciting to be on this, like, Oh, wow. You want to you know, shoot me on the TV show. Cool. Like, yeah. You know, and, and the show's about like getting drunk and high, like that's pretty awesome. Um, and you know, this was back, of course, like year 2000 or so mm-hmm. back, before mockumentaries were really a thing. So like Trailer Park Boys was one of the first, you know, um, shows to sort of shoot that style, the mockumentary style. Exactly. So, yeah. so, it started, so like, it started with, there, there was, if I remember correctly, with uh, with uh, Showcase, it started off a little black and white movie of just Ricky and Julian only. That's then right. Black and white movie. It, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I should watch that again. That'd be great to see again. Um, is that on uh, on Netflix? I wonder. No, it's not on Netflix. I ended up getting a. I got a copy myself because I, I, I from Mike Smith. He sent me the copy, so that's why I ended up getting it. Because oh, you see, like, cool. there's a lot of difference in that movie. Like you see, Ricky doesn't have the mustache. He's got just those weird looking sideburns. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Julian drink, but he's doing a lot of coke. It's a big that's difference. Right. Okay, but yeah, then after, that, I guess when they got to deal with Showcase, they kind of you know. Let, let's let's get rid of this and put a drink yeah. in your hand. Yeah, because even Sam was in it. Sam Losco, he plays a. I, th- I think in the credits, he's Dick Number One, and then there's Dick Number Two, Dick Number Three. Hey. So, oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah he's that had- came more swearing when they moved to. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> I think at the end of it when they're they're arguing and then they start shooting to Pat Roach, who was like they needed to kill his dog or whatever. And then it ends like that, and that's how the beginning of the first of the first episode of season one starts. They they they're they're in a gun shooting in black and white. Then it starts with them in prison. So it's the end of that movie hey. to continue the show. So well, they actually like have the continuity there. That's uh, quite the attention to detail. Yeah, I'll, like I said, I'm, watch it again. I'm uh, weird. I follow details like crazy. So well, that's cool. Um, so yeah, like I were like. Back when the first season came out, I remember like wa- like watching the episode, like first season, mm-hmm. like whoa, this is like this show is rough. Like just, I guess between all the swearing and just like the you know like the crazy like camera movement, like not used to that mockumentary style. It's just like this, show, I thought is going nowhere. Like it's you know it's fun to be on. It's kind of funny, but like there's no way this is going anywhere. It's too out of control. Um, I find that everybody. Everybody thought it was going to be a one or two episode, two season thing, and then over. Because like uh, Bernard Robichaud, who plays Cyrus, told me the same thing. He's like, I was on there for the first episode, a couple of things, and he's like, I thought it was going to be a one hit thing, and then it was going to it was going to fail. But then no one thought it would have went over all the way to season 12, 13, 14 animated, and on Netflix and all these extra specials and everything. So, yeah, it's uh, it's re- unbelievable. I mean, as you know, after season seven, it's like they wrapped up the show, and that was you know. People thought that was going to be the end of it. Yeah. Point. Um, and yeah, like, then, like they brought they brought the swear net movie in between both of those, and then if you watch like the end credits of that, you find they bought the rights to the guys again, and you've got the three guys on one side, and you got the other three guys on the other side making a deal, and then at the end of that, that's when season eight comes in on Netflix. That's when we see you right away. Okay. You're on the roof putting that, that that air conditioner in, and then after that, yeah, you yeah. be your regular in that ever since then. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knocked up by Trinity, and uh, the rest is history. Exactly, exactly. So, how does it feel being, like I said, when you you do art yourself and everything else? How does it feel being now on the show as a animated character? Because you know, you, you do art, and then seeing yourself in a cartoon now must give you that little cool kind of like what what what's the feeling it gives you? Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, it's trippy. Like it is sort of like a weird dream come true. Um, like I remember watching, uh, you know, well, like tons of cartoons, of course, but like especially Scooby Doo, and uh, sort of identifying with Shaggy. Yeah, because and, of the and everything too. So being Shaggy or something like something like that, and then so in a way, like it's uh, like my dreams become a reality. 
like a weird fucked up reality. <laughs> how is it? How is it doing there? Like, is there a difference? Like, uh, do you feel a difference doing the real life stuff to the animated show? Like, I've heard some of the guys say they oh, like yeah. stuff better because you're there with a crowd as opposed to animated. You're just in a booth doing your stuff alone, right? So it's really different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. Like, I mean, that's one of the things. I mean, in the show itself, too, I, mean, I guess I am sort of acting to some yeah. some but like really, I'm just like being myself, pretending to be to be in, the, in these different situations. Mm-hmm. And the fact that there's people there dressed in a certain way on a set uh, you know, really helps you like with that make believe. And uh, for me, that that really helps because I mean, I, like a skilled actor can, you know, just be in a yeah, like in a on a stage with a stool. And you know, make you believe you're anywhere, probably just 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 by the performance. But that's certainly not my you know not my style. And so I I really you know appreciate and benefit from yeah, like having like like being on a set with people where you can actually pretend the stuff is happening like in a way that's like more realistic, I guess. Whereas yeah, being like and anyway for for the animation where you're just like in front of a. Uh, like one of those music stand things and, and a microphone. Um, and there's, you know, sometimes there's other people there like reading some of the lines, sometimes not depending. Um, well, I, I, I guess there'll always be someone reading the lines back, but I might just be like some random person and not one of the actors. Um, and so it, it is much harder to pretend. And luckily there are directors there who just like will sort of tell you to do the line delivery in slightly different ways that like make sense for the scene more. Be more, excited, be more excited, be more scared, be more like be more nervous, anxious. Yeah, something. exactly. Yeah, or like often in the script too, it's not clear like what the context. Like yeah, like yeah, am I, am I supposed to be excited about this or confused or whatever? And so I mean that that would be um, that would be sorted out like during the recording session. Mm-hmm. I guess on set it's the same thing. It's always clear, you know, how the actor, how the writers conceive the actor to, you know, be in a certain scene. So it's good to be able to get some feedback. Nice. I, nice. I, I, I love like, some directions and feedback. You know, when I'm uh, on set, I find I, I, I really uh, benefit from it. I see. I like I like the fact they brought the animated series in because it keeps John in the series too. It keeps John John's work in the series as. You know the liquor ghost. You, yeah. you, know, you know, rest in peace. He died. He was an amazing. He was an amazing actor, and to have him still in there, I think a lot of fans enjoy that because they. I, I heard he did a lot of extra recordings that were never put in the show. That some of them they're using some of those into the animated series too. So there must be tons of yeah B roll or and even just like by selectively taking stuff from stuff that they even aired, mm-hmm. they could you know put it in a different context and. uh you know, bring him back to life, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. How, how is it's it working with, on the on live? Say again, sorry? How was it working with John on the set? Oh, awesome. I, I was always, like, uh, happiest when John was around. Uh, he was such a friendly guy. And then actually, like, on set acting, he would often give me, like, little tips on acting, which, again, like, I wouldn't really get from... I guess like other people just wouldn't think of it. Like he was like, like a professional actor, and maybe it was just just his character too. He's more ha- happy to share and like, so like just little ways to react during a scene or things that like wouldn't be obvious to you know me as an untrained person that would like really help with with you know some scenes and like the realisticness of stuff. And so like being in scenes with him, he would you know he'd always be happy to help with some uh, you know if, if I had questions or whatever, and then. Often he would just be on set, like chilling out, he and his like, you know, funny, freaky self, doing crosswords, playing Scrabble and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was always a pleasure because he's always such a like a gregarious and welcoming dude. Well, yeah, he he was in. I, I met him. I met him two or three times during the uh, Leahy Randy show when they traveled around. Oh yeah, I helped, I helped out for the shows in Ottawa and Montreal, and like we go out to eat, and like he was the nicest guy in the world. There was one time where actually uh, it was supposed to be the uh, promoter to buy his his dinner. I snuck out because I knew the I knew the restaurant and I bought his his and past dinner. And then he I I wanted to keep it a secret. He found out from someone else and he came up to me. and He said like thank you for that. He's like most people don't do that because they see we're actors. We get paid lots of money. I'm like well no I I invited you out. I don't care uh-huh. if you I don't care if, I don't care if I make twenty bucks in a week and you make a million in a week. It's still my treat. I brought you out. 
So he actually really respected that sort of path. It was kind of cool. So yeah, he's so good at making people feel like at ease and welcome. Like it's he's always you know like often yeah folks would be nervous. I'm sure like going up to him and stuff, but he would always like make everyone feel like super, you know, like you're just super relaxed. He's so right. friendly. So out of uh, out of the whole Trailer Park Boy series so far, from season one till now, including the animated and everything, what would be your favorite scene? out of everything which one do you enjoy the most which one can you relive the most good god you know i don't even i don't even know where i would begin to like like choose a favorite um you know what i need to do is like actually watch the whole series again because like there's so much stuff that that i've forgotten that was you know that was like fun to do Like totally that I, I i just i just won't even think of but uh i mean doing like big scenes like the crash up derby in uh you know, season 12 and stuff like that was like you know pretty exciting um driving around in the shipmobile would always be pretty exciting uh i guess maybe similar to the crash up derby it's like when when the adrenaline going um which it always is when you're in the shipmobile because you don't know if you're going to get like shot out of like the passenger side you know window a uh, uh, doorless door or die of like gas fumes in the back seat or like who knows what <laughs> get jabbed with a piece of rust and like end up getting uh tetanus or something <laughs> um but yeah it's really tough to uh you know to to choose one one that comes to mind uh like one scene i had a lot of fun with um can, I guess I can't say if it was my favorite or not, and I'm sure you know there could be other contenders. But uh, it was it would have been like season maybe nine or so, where uh, Ricky had turned his. Uh, oh no, it must have been season eight when we're putting the Giants air conditioner on the roof because that's when he turns his trailer into a hockey. Yes, and he's pissed at me because I knocked up his daughter, and so he's 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 got, he's got the ho- the hockey camp going, and he's teaching the kids how to body check. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And, they, and then he he uh, chooses me to demonstrate on, and they rigged it up so like the front window of the trailer would hinges. So he, I would go towards him. Um, I think I was wearing skates too. Like they had us in skates on this like plastic surface inside the trailer that just looked like ice. It did look like ice, I guess, white plastic, and you can kind of slide on a little bit. But I would go towards him, and he would just totally like throw me out the window, and I would like go out this window that was on the hinges and then the flop on this like kind of pad they had and then like roll down to the ground and we, you know we had to do it like half a dozen times or, or something like that you know like all these takes and at first it was it was fine and as more and more takes happened i was just getting more and more battered and bruised mm-hmm. but like crazy shit like that whereas like back when i used to do my own stunts um like uh like that one you know those 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 were definitely some memorable scenes nice 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 yeah, so many so many crazy memories on that show i mean i i really feel like in a way it's like them putting their you know their friends and uh, actors into situations that are just so ridiculous it's like almost for their own amusement <laughs> See me the, the parts that the parts i like that you were in like the, the most recent ones was also the uh you know when you dressed up like julian you became your own Julian, and they're like, "Is he is he is he rocking a mustard glass?" And you got the classic mustard glass in your hand, and you've got your own you got, you got your own two guys with you. And then the last one, the other one is uh, when that uh, horse kicks you. I find that one kind of funny because like that's the first time you actually somebody severely gets injured on the show because you, you get kicked back and you're like, "I think my neck is broken." And then, like the next day they see you, you got the whole neck wire on, and you're getting caught everywhere or banging yourself everywhere with it. So. <laughs> that, yeah, that was, made more real that was nuts you know they wanted me to actually like get to go flying through the barn door in like for that scene they're like oh hey uh did anyone talk to you about this like yeah we've got this scene on the schedule tomorrow where you're supposed to do this like how do you you know how do you feel about that <laughs> and I, was like, I don't i didn't i do not feel good about that at all like as i get older like i've got a bad back and so i could you know yeah throwing myself through a through a you know bunch of wood even if it's like cut so it breaks easier does not sound like something that i want to do like it still hurts and it, it, it hurts for a while <laughs> so they end up getting a stuntman for that but that was pretty funny like, like getting in there behind the horse for that scene like that was that was totally crazy like 
Um, and then all, all the stuff from season seven in the woods was also like a super trip, like to to film, like lots of lots of fun times. Man, oh man. Oh yeah, like I said, like I said, even the, like there's one like the when Ricky finds out about uh, you and Trinity, you, you're on the roof of the the Dirty Dancer, and he's like, Jacob, get down here. And we just see you slide off the other side of the roof. We don't know if you you fell off or you just you know you just you just dive yeah. your life and away. We don't even see. We just see you slide off and then you're gone. So. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I can't wait till we uh, shoot some more stuff for the show. So, is there going to be? Uh, I I've heard rumors that there's another animated series, like a, a season three of the animated coming out. But are they thinking of doing a another real life event, like another real life show? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's uh, not a secret that um, there is a new season of the real life show coming out pretty soon. Um, okay. So yeah, I don't know if I could say much more than that, but uh, yeah, there's uh, it, it, it's already been shot, and um, it should be coming out real soon, and uh, I, I think it's going to be awesome. Perfect. Now, is it a? Are they continuing from the animated series, or are they going to continue from uh, season twelve? At the end of season twelve, because of all the shrooms, you guys become these cartoon characters, and that's how the animated series starts. So does that mean the animated series ends, and you guys are off the shrooms, and you guys are back to normal or something? Yeah tricky I, I don't know how they actually work out the continuity between the the animation and the live action because yeah we went from the live action into the animation from eating yeah. too many mushrooms but so yeah yeah i'm i'm um i'm not sure i'm, I'm very curious to see how uh like how that's um like how that uh, dovetails into its how the live action dovetails in, into the animation and how the animation dovetails yeah. into the live action but uh, yeah, it's, there's information online which I think we can figure out. I'm not sure what I can say or not, so I won't say too much. But yeah, like it's a different take on the show. Um, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, it's definitely classic, you know, crazy old trailer park boys um, first and foremost. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. It was a pleasure and it was an honor to have you on. Oh man, it's, it was a pleasure to be here, Mike. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, and I guess like when I when I when I come down to Nova Scotia to see T and all of them, I'll have to I'll have to send you a text and see if you want to hang out for a bit too while I'm down there. So, yeah, man, come visit. I'm on the South Shore. Uh, you're welcome for a visit anytime, dude. Perfect. I'll bring beer. <laughs> well, uh, I got some weed, um, and uh, the we can get beer at the corner store just down the road. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you again, and take care. Hey, pleasure, my man. Take care. Shadow with a right, right. Up, I'm about to take.